Our scripture lesson today comes from the book of Genesis, the 12th, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 9. Hear now the word of the Lord. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife, Sarai, and his brother's son, Lot, and all the possessions they had gathered, the persons whom they had acquired in Haran, and they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the oak of Moriah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there he moved on to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on by stages toward the Negev. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'm a planner. I like to know where I'm going. Uh, so when I go on a trip, I have my GPS. A lot of times I also have a map as a backup um, because I want to get to my destination the best way possible. Now, GPS is relatively new. Many of you remember the days before GPS. And even maps, accurate maps, haven't been around all that long. But even without navigational aids, most people, when they set out on a journey, want to know where they're going. They have a destination in mind, and at least a general idea of how to get there. Even Lewis and Clark, whose goal was to map the new territory and find a westward passage, had a general destination in mind when they set out. But not Abram and Sarai. You know, you may know them better by the names that God gave them later in their lives, Abraham and Sarah. So I will use the more familiar names for the rest of the, this sermon. But in this passage, God told Abraham to go. Just go to a place that God would show him. He got his marching orders, but he didn't know what the destination was going to be. Now that's tough in and of itself, but Abram, Abraham, when he decided to follow God, had to leave everything that was familiar to him. His land, his family, his home. To do this, Abraham and Sarah had to trust God and obey. They had to be willing to put their trust and their future in the hands of the Lord. Now that's a big ask, and it's a testament to their faith that after they heard from God, they packed up and left. Put yourself in Abraham and Sarah's shoes. Can you imagine the discomfort they must have felt leaving everything that was familiar to them to go out into the unknown? 
like I said, that takes a lot of trust. The thing is, God calls each of us to step out of our comfort zones, to leave the familiar, and trust that God will lead us somewhere good and meaningful. None of us knows what the future holds, only God. At some point in each of our lives, I believe that we will each be called to take a step of faith and embark on a journey where we don't have a clear destination in mind. There will come a time when God will ask us to follow, to trust, and to go or do, even when we don't know what we're go where we're going or what the outcome of what we do might be. Now, on Pentecost, Becky talked about the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is God living in us. And as part of us, God can speak to us in subtle ways that I have found are like thoughts or ideas. Now, since God is this subtle, we need to be paying attention and not shrug off those urges, those feelings, or that still small voice that we hear. Have you ever felt the urge or had the idea to do something for others that didn't really make sense? Maybe it was something that seemed beyond your skills and abilities. Or maybe it's some thought that just keeps popping up in your mind that seems a little bit crazy or is so totally different from what you normally do that you just dismiss it out of hand. If this persistent idea is something that involves stepping out of your comfort zone and trusting God, you might want to pay a little more attention to it. It could be God calling you to trust and follow. Now, I believe you should pray about it and get wise counsel, but many times God calls us to take a step of faith that leads us beyond where we're comfortable because it's only when we are outside of our comfort zone and doing things that we're not completely sure about that we actually have to fully trust in the Lord. For instance, back in the late 1970s, God planted a somewhat crazy idea in the mind of a guy named John Culp. The idea was that John could use a few adults and a lot of youth to show the love of God in tangible ways to the poor people of South Carolina by making their houses warmer, safer, and drier. So John took a step of faith. He had no idea where this step would take him, but he was willing to trust God and follow where God led. And from that faithful step, Salkahatchee Summer Service was born. Now this week, Washington Street has 20 youth and adults serving in the Penn Center Salkahatchee Camp. They will be working on the homes of five families. And there are camps all over South Carolina both this week and for the rest of the summer that will all be doing the same thing, showing the love of God in tangible ways to people who tend to get overlooked by society. In the years since John trusted God and took that step of faith, over 6,000 South Carolina families have been helped by the youth and adults that have attended Salkahatchee. Now, I think John Culp and Salkahatchee Summer Service are a great example of what being willing to take a step of faith looks like. But not all of us are called to start statewide ministries. So what can we learn from Abraham's call? 
Well, first, God wants us to trust and obey. When we are willing to listen, trust, and follow God, good things will happen. Now hear me clearly, that does not mean that our lives will be perfect. However, it does mean that we will have peace, the peace that comes from knowing we are doing what God wants us to. I have found when I listen to God and am willing to trust and follow, I have a, I have a sense of fulfillment and contentment that I don't have if I'm off doing my own thing. However, following God is not a one-time choice. It's a decision we make daily and sometimes hourly. It's the choice to follow God's way and not our own way, and that's hard. Sometimes for days, weeks, or even years, we can make the wrong choice. Abraham's story is long. Uh, if I encourage all of you to read it, it's found in chapters 12 through 25 of the book of Genesis. But when you read it, you will find out that even though Abraham is one of our pillars of faith, he was not perfect, far from it. And you will find out that Abraham made wrong choices. He would go off on his own, in his own direction, his own way, and not follow where God was leading. The good thing is, he would eventually realize it, start paying closer attention to God, and get back on track. The same is true for us. Getting off track and losing our way does not preclude us from following God. It just means we need to make an adjustment. Second, there's no age limit to a call from God. God calls each of us to do things throughout our lives. God can use the very young as well as the very old. The prophet Samuel was a young boy when he heard God's voice. Abraham was 75 years old when God told him to set out for an unknown land. So we are never too old or too young to trust God and follow where God leads. The final thing we learn from this passage is that when we follow the Lord, God will bless us. However, these blessings are not just for us. It's not all about us. We, like Abraham, are blessed in order to be a blessing to others. God wants everyone to feel divine love, inclusion, grace, and mercy. That's why the story of Salkahatchee Summer Service is meaningful. Over the years, more than 63,000 people have participated in the camps where they spend a week working on homes. The work is both challenging and fulfilling, but by being willing to help others, they provide a blessing to those families. And you can never underestimate how important it is to, to actually show the love of God to people who tend to be overlooked. It's a wonderful experience. And so those people that are working not only are blessing the others, but they receive a huge blessing because God is using them in ways both big and small. My friends, we all face times of uncertainty where we need to move, but we don't know what the future holds. In those times, we need to seek the Lord, listen for God's guidance, and trust that God will lead us to a land of promise, even if we don't know what it will look like. 
as Becky talked about other, earlier in her prayer and as our delegates told us, the United Methodist Church is in such a position right now. Our denomination is in the midst of change and no one knows what the future will bring. The vote on Tuesday to accept the separation of 113 South Carolina congregations was gut-wrenching to me because I know people who have been devastated by those changes. I find it incredibly sad that some congregations feel that they must leave the United Methodist Church because they don't want to include people that they disapprove of particularly LGBTQIA plus individuals. I hope and pray that the next general conference that will be this coming May 2024 can make the changes necessary to make us a fully inclusive con uh, denomination. But none of us knows what the future holds. And this uncertainty creates anxiety. While the future shape of the United Methodist Church is unknown, we know who holds the future, which is reason for hope and optimism. My friends, God is with us, just like God was with Abraham and Sarah. Our God who took on human flesh in Jesus Christ, did so to show us the full extent of divine love. Jesus embodied God's love for us, and the life of Jesus shows us what God cares about. Jesus lifted up those who were downtrodden. He included those who were outcast, and he valued those who were marginalized. Consequently, I am sure that when we faithfully follow God, the Lord will lead us into a more loving and inclusive future. Thanks be to God. <laughs>